I have a rule when it comes to judging anime, and that's that I'm judging the anime, not the manga or light novel or video game or whatever a show might be based off of. Any explanations that are given in the manga or continuations or whatever don't count, and I just basically pretend the manga doesn't exist when I review the anime, which is pretty easy for me to do since I rarely read manga. So in the case I do read manga, the same rules would apply. I judge the manga on its own, and I don't care what the anime or any other adaptations of it did. I am judging the manga. But today, I am going to make a bit of an exception. Partly because I've already covered a lot of my thoughts on the story in my review of the anime, but also because I think it would be interesting to look at the manga from the perspective of someone who has seen the anime going beyond just the good and the bad. So the anime for Gekko Garashi, also known as School Live, came out in 2015 and I was instantly hooked. I knew that there was more to it than their first scene, but I didn't know the exact direction they would take and well, it was pretty amazing. It did something really incredible through the Moe slice of life genre by taking the fun school activities and putting them in a different setting. It also did so in a way that really isn't possible for me to talk about without spoiling it in some things, so yeah. Like I did in my anime review, I'm going to go suggest you watch the first couple episodes of the anime if you do not want to be spoiled, though I guess you could also read the manga, though I actually think the anime covers that introduction part better. There might also be some minor spoilers beyond the first couple episodes, but I will try to avoid those as best as I can. So, as I've seen, I really did like the anime, though it ended incomplete, and I wanted more. And for once, since I just complained about the anime being incomplete, I decided to go start reading the manga. But then after about 10 chapters, I saw that the new chapters only came out once a month, so I didn't want to be caught up when things would take so long, so I basically just forgot about the manga at that point. But then I decided to do Manga March, and I really wanted it to be one of the manga I reviewed, because it would be an example of a manga where I'd seen the anime, and then uh, the manga would continue on from there. And I thought it'd be interesting to experience a manga in this way, since I had not done so before. Plus, as I said, I wanted to see the rest of the story, but much to my surprise, it actually got the most number of votes, so here it is with the first series manga review that I have ever done. Unless you count that first impressions, but yeah. So, if you don't know and didn't listen to my warning about spoilers, Gekukurashi is a Moe slice of life set in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. It focuses on four high schoolers who are now living at their school, and they deem themselves the school live club because they live at school. It makes kind of sense there. The thing that makes this story really unique is the fact that the main character Yuki has mentally blocked out the zombies and thinks she is just living a normal life. For much of the show, the focus was on the fun things that the characters were doing, though there was plenty of serious moments as well, and the contrast was something really special. You have all the characters trying to survive, but Yuki just cares about having fun. And then you have all these characters having fun, but there are zombies surrounding the school, and just all these contrasts was really neat. The manga is similar to the anime in this regard, not surprisingly. Though it did feel like the anime was focusing more on the fun moments than the serious part, while the manga is more focused on the serious parts with a few fun moments to lighten the mood. So the manga did not feel like a slice of life, just a zombie story with a few light moments thrown in. One of the things I liked about the manga was how it was able to better show the middle ground between hope and despair, especially with regards to some events with Kurami that happened later on in the story, so the anime didn't get to this part. Yuki is another character that I really like what the manga was able to do. In the anime, her purpose was to be oblivious to the danger that they were in, but her way of holding on to hope and having fun is something that gave all the other characters hope. And while this is shown in the manga as well, the manga keeps going further and showing how she views the world even when she understands the truth, but still holding on to her wanting hope and wanting to live a normal life. And this ended up being done really well with the most recent chapter, chapter 52, which I'm kind of glad he ended it there, not on a completely evil cliffhanger. And this chapter is really able to let Yuki shine, both through her actions and also from her personality, and, well, that's just really good to see. All the main cast is explored in interesting ways as well, showing how they are dealing with the situation they're in. Yuri is shown to be on edge after learning about her family, and Mika grows quite a bit throughout the story, though not much more than we saw in the anime. And Kermi's part is also really interesting, especially when you consider some of the things that have recently been happening, and well, I'm excited to see how she will react to everything and what she'll end up doing. I also like how the manga is better able to explore the symbolism with growing up and finding your place in the world, which is partly because the story went further. There are a lot of different ways to look at the story as symbolism, and I just always think it's fascinating to try and figure out exactly what the story is trying to say, beyond just telling the events that happened. So yeah, not surprisingly, I do like the manga version of the story as well, which I'd be surprised if I didn't, considering I like the anime so much. And it even fixed some of the problems I had with the anime. Or I guess you could say that the anime added problems because I'm going in the opposite order of how it was made, but whatever. And the manga also had a lot of the strong moments of fear and suspense, so I think the anime was able to do this better, though this is mainly just because it had like the animation and the sound and the voice acting and the color and all that just to bring the scene to life more, something that the manga just can't do. It also felt like there wasn't as much time spent establishing the characters for the most recent arc, but I could probably say the same about the four main girls for the first 30 or so chapters, it's just I already knew them from the anime so that it didn't matter if they didn't get as much time in the manga. I'm also glad that this is the first series I'm reviewing for the most because of all the differences because of the anime and manga, and I like just trying to figure out the mindset of the anime creators as they took the manga and tried to figure out how are they going to adapt it to the anime. 
for example, they decided to end the anime around chapter 30 because that ending of the arc was a good place to stop. And if we don't get more, at least we got some closure there. They also combined and changed some of the events with the zombies so they could like cut out some plot points or combine them. Or something that isn't being resolved until later in the story, they could just cut that without it being a loose hanging thread. As I said before, the anime also added a lot more focus to the Moe scenes, which really took advantage of what the medium of anime had done and what expectations were. And I think this is part of the reason I like the anime so much is how it was able to contrast Moe to serious zombie invasion thing. The manga also did feel quite fast-paced compared to the anime, though again, I think this is probably the nature of the manga, where I read a chapter in a few minutes as opposed to watching an episode in like 25 minutes. And even if you adapt two chapters per episode, that's still going to move faster in manga than anime. I'm curious how this will be with other manga when I read them, especially since I will not have seen the anime beforehand, so yeah, I'll make sure to bring this topic up again for next week's manga review. So, in conclusion, yes, I like the anime, I like the manga for Gekko Garashi, I recommend them both. It's hard to say which I like better, probably the anime, just because it had like all the more production values. But I'm going to keep reading the manga as new chapters or volumes come out, even though I'll have to wait like a month between each chapter. And well, I'm not looking forward to that. But, oh well, maybe I'll wait until like the whole volume's released and I read that in like half an hour, which also makes me kind of sad. And that concludes my review. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And tell me what are your, some of your thoughts on shows where you've both seen the show and seen the manga or read the manga. I guess you kind of see the manga too, but whatever. Talk to you later. Goodbye.